All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So hello, everyone, and welcome to PNP Live. My name is Emma, and I'm a bookseller in the Children and Teens Department at Politics and Prose. Thank you for joining us and tuning into this virtual format where we continue to bring authors and new books to you. I have the pleasure of hosting our event this evening, and I'm delighted to welcome our guests, Fred Bowen and James Ransom, in conversation with Deborah D. Taylor to celebrate the publication of their wonderful collaboration, Hardcourt, Stories from 75 Years of the National Basketball Association. So starting with Fred Bowen, Fred Bowen is the author of more than 20 children's books about sports, including Gridiron, his first collaboration with James E. Ransom about the NFL. For the, fast, uh, for the past 20 years, he has written the Kids Post Sports <laughs> column in the Washington Post. Fred lives in Maryland with his family. James E. Ransom's highly acclaimed illustrations for Before She Was Harriet received the 2018 Coretta Scott King Illustrator Honor. His other winning titles include the Coretta Scott King winner, The Creation, Coretta Scott King Honor book, Uncle Jed's Barbershop, and Let My People Go, winner of the NAACP Image Award. James is a professor and coordinator of the MFA Illustration Graduate Program at Syracuse University. He lives in New York's Hudson River Valley with his family. Deborah D. Taylor, a politics and prose contributing moderator, retired from the Enoch Pratt Free Library in Baltimore, Maryland. She has chaired and served on many American Library Association committees, committees and on the National Book Awards Jury for Young People's Literature. She was named the 2015 recipient of the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement. She's a reviewer and currently serves as the chair of the Ezra Jack Keats Awards Committee. For today's event, you can ask our guests a question by clicking on the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. You can also vote on your favorite questions by clicking the thumbs up button. If you haven't had the chance to purchase your own copy of Hardcore, you can do so by clicking on the link in the chat. Books signed by Fred Bowen will be available while supplies last. Please note that closed captioning is available for today's program. Click the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen and select enable transcript. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn the conversation over to our lovely speakers. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it, Emma. Welcome, Fred. Welcome, James. And happy book birthday to both of you. So what a great achievement this is. And right as things are heating up in the, in the MBA this year. So um, it's great to talk to you about this beautiful and really in, um, lively narrative as well. I just, I'm curious, um, when you were the age or the ages of the intended audience of this book, how did you feel about basketball, Fred? Uh, start with me. Well, I guess um, I loved the game. I uh, played it all the time. We had a uh, basket in my uh, driveway up on the garage. But I have to say that the game didn't necessarily love me back. Um, I, it took a while for me to get to my adult height. And so I was, uh, I was, uh, cut from my ninth grade basketball team. And then I tried, I was a little taller later on. And I tried out as a junior in high school and I was cut again. Those were big disappointments, but I was very lucky in one way. And that was that, uh, my father was a, in advertising in Boston. And so he was able to get, um, uh, Boston Celtic tickets. And so back in the 1960s, uh, when I was young, about the time I'd be reading a book like this, my father was taking our family to see uh, some of the people that I'm writing about, like Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, Sam wow. Jones, all the greats. I saw a game where Oscar Robertson scored 43 points. So a lot of great memories uh, for uh, basketball. And how about you, James? What was it like for you when you were a kid with basketball? Well, basketball was um, the first sport, sport that I fell in love with. Um, I wanted to be a globetrotter when I was a kid. So I would practice all those moves, you know, dribbling, you know, low to the ground, spinning around all those things. Um, it was something, um, I remember actually checking books out from the library about how to play basketball so I could uh, get my skills up. Um, so, you know, that's, I just have a lot of, um, lot of childhood memories of basketball. Um, it was one, one of those early sports for me that I would practice all the time. I was never that great at it. Um, and um, later on, I was introduced to football, and that's when I sort of moved away from basketball. But that was my first, first love was basketball. I find that, you know, it, it tends to be a, a sport that does intrigue um, both boys and girls. 
Yeah. And so this book, I think, is going to be um, something that they would both enjoy. And Fred, you have written about sports both as a journalist and as a fiction writer. Um, what is special about writing about a sports milestone anniversary? Well, uh, both uh, Gridiron and Hardcourt uh, were that, and that's 100 years of the mm -hmm. NFL and 75 years of uh, the NBA. I think it's an opportunity to, to kind of stop and look back and see what was important. And that is actually one of the challenges, I think, of writing uh, a book like this is you want to get sort of the arc of the story, like how the game developed, uh, what was important, who were the important players, but you want to tell it in an entertaining way. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so it's a, uh, a bit of a challenge that way, but I have to say, tremendous amount of fun. I mean, I had a ready-made excuse to read basketball books and now, you, of course, you can watch a lot of the games on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I would be asked what I was doing, I was working. <laughs> it was a, a fun job. Well, you know, I was struck by the opening chapter and um, just the simplistic, the, the game is seemingly um, simple. I mean, it, once you dig into it, you find out it's a little more complex than that. Um, speak to that a little bit about the beginnings of, of that, of the game. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I was, they always say that uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And it, in the story that I tell about the beginning of basketball, which James Naismith was a 30 year old um, phys ed teacher in Springfield, Massachusetts. And he had a rowdy group of teenage boys um, <laughs> that it was too cold to go out to play baseball or, or football. And uh, his bosses said, you know, you really got to come up with a game that's going to keep these young men occupied, but not have them break anything. <laughs> and, um, and so he came up with the original 13 rules of uh, basketball, uh, some of which were very different. Uh, of course, uh, there were nine players on a side in the first game. They famously had peach baskets and um, there was no dribbling. The players came up with, you know, some of the changes in the game. So it's very interesting how the game developed. And as for the NBA starting, it was really um, um, arena owners who mm -hmm. needed more events to bring people into their arena. So they thought, well, why don't we try a, a professional basketball uh, league? And it was uh, first called the BAA, the Basketball Association of America, and then the NBA. And the first years were pretty rough. It wasn't, it didn't catch on right away. James, there are so many action illustrations, um, yet they're all very distinctive. Um, what was your planning process to achieve that? Um, well, you know, Fred really set me up well with the, the manuscript that he um, he wrote. So, and it, it, it got my attention right away. Um, I, you know, learning about how this, the sport started, um, learning about um, how it changed into the NBA. And, um, you know, when I saw the globe trotters in the text, you know, okay, you got me, you got, I'm halfway there. <laughs> and then about the fact you put in street basketball. I mean, you know, I would think that most books about, you know, the NBA are not gonna talk about what happens in the streets of cities all over this country. But, you know, I've seen um, people play in New York City. I know how important it is. Um, and so those things made me really interested in doing the book. One of the first things I realized was this was very different from, you know, the sports are different, obviously, from football. Football is more horizontal and basketball is more vertical. Mm -hmm. And so um, I felt that it, it, gave, it gave me some challenges with taller players. I had to really think about the layout. So I, I thought that the, the book is designed differently for the most part inside of, um, and that's what I really like about this book. I think the design really came out well. Um, I also wanted to break away from just having all images of people playing basketball. That was important to me to introduce some other things besides just people, you know, going up and down and shooting over and over and over again. 
One of the things that I noticed is that color palette is often dictated by either the star or the team, um, but there are other paintings um, such as the one that accompanies chapter 12, Air Jordan, that are distinguished um, by being so infused with light and reflection. Yeah. Who are you looking to convey there? Yeah, I'm gonna show that one to everyone if you yeah, don't mind. I'm gonna do. see, get my do. screen here. And um, let's see, it's right here. And let's bring this over and we'll go down to, this is the image here that yeah. we're talking about. Gorgeous, gorgeous. To um, here, make it bigger. Uh, well, thank you, thanks a lot. Well, you know, um, again, the, the text just really set me up and just reading that, um, you know, Michael Jordan is practicing in this older gym, you know, so the, I just, you know, I've seen these scenes before, you know, it's sort of classic, you know, the light coming in, the floor is reflecting and, you know, the lights bouncing off the floor. I just knew this is what I wanted to capture in this scene. So um, this is one of my um, first sketches that we that we definitely was going with. And I, I work, worked really hard to capture that light and just that shape. And all I really wanted to show is just this shape of this guy shooting a basket from a distance and practicing. So it was sort of a given, I think. I think it just really, it, it really heightens the sense of, you know, of a particular style of play, you know, light, lighter than air, light, um, reflection oh. that, that bounces. I mean, it just really sums it up beautifully. Great okay. job there. Um, Fred, you know, it's impossible to talk about um, the NBA or basketball without addressing race. Um, early in chapter four, you point out that there were no African-American players in the NBA during the first four season. And how did that evolve to a league with almost 75% black players? Well, you know, it's interesting. Before I address that, I just want to point out that the image that James just showed, I think in, we've done two books together and I think he's probably done 150 images. That one is my favorite. That one is, just, I get chills when I see him because I sort of, it really evokes what a lot of those basketball players do. And it is the mm -hmm. really lonely pursuit of excellence. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Here he was, he was the, one of the best players in the world. And somebody said to him, you really got to improve your jump shot. Mm. So there he went. Now to the, your, your question about race, you know, it, it is so important. Uh, the, um, you know, the NBA was, of course, not alone in that. Uh, at at mm -hmm. that time, it was, um, you know, Jackie Robinson had just uh, uh, integrated baseball in 1947. The United States military had only been integrated in 1948. Uh, so it was uh, shamefully common in the, uh, in the country. One of the things was, is once the players started to come in, it, it, just some of the, in the 1950s alone, uh, who did you have come in? Bill Russell came in. Mm, uh, mm -hmm. it was, uh, Will Chamberlain, uh, Elgin Baylor, um, you know, in 1960, Oscar Robertson. These were people who, you know, later legends, but they really raised uh, the bar in the game and really, one of the things that happened in the 1950s was that pro basketball started to take off because of the influx of better players, but also the 24 second clock. They invented the 24 second clock, which made the game faster and more exciting than the usual college games. And so the game started to take off in the 1950s. How did... The how did it change? Who changed? The game changed by who played the game. How did it, yeah, it, how know, did it that impact it, on that? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, James has already mentioned, you know, the, the vertical aspect of mm -hmm. basketball. And actually, when you watch the old games of, you know, the 1930s and 40s, it, people weaving around and one get, guy gets a, you know, a two-hand set shot. And it just seems like the uh, players are nailed to the floor. Uh, you know, some of the uh, uh, players who came in in the 50s, for example, Elgin Baylor was one of the first players. They actually, the term hang time 
mm. was first used with Elgin Baylor because he was a guy six five who could really get up in the air. And um, you know, who was I have a quote from somebody in the book. He said, Well, he didn't violate the laws of gravity, but he didn't obey them very quickly. <laughs> And, you know, he was, um, and so that sort of changed the game, that the, the game became faster and it became uh, more of a, a jumping game and a game that was up in the air. And that, that brought a lot of excitement um, to the game. And so that got people interested because now it wasn't just this, you know, mm -hmm. weaving around on the floor. It was up in the air. And that was, uh, well, I remember, you know, Bill Russell was a spectacular leaper, uh, you know, and, and, and so uh, his ability to block shots and things. So the game started to change quite a bit. James, I, I love the illustration that accompanies the chapter on Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, Bird and Magic. Yeah. Um, can you speak about that painting? And it really does reflect what you said. You just didn't want to just keep painting um, shots of people playing basketball. I love it was so unexpected, you know, when you turn the turn the page and that yeah. painting pops yeah. up. Um, well, um, what's going on? Okay, I need to stop this. Um, well, that's exactly it. I was really going for something different again. Um, and OK, here we go. It has its own mind. And Give it away the whole yeah. book. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, I, I really thought a long time, okay, how could I illustrate, you know, bird and magic? And, you know, and I, you know, of any other pe people in the book, this was a, obvious because of the nicknames and those names, mm -hmm. I, could, I could do something special here. And I, you know, because I read the text over and over again, I also knew that there's gonna be lots of pages with just the two of them um, playing basketball up, up against each other. So I wanna do something different here. So the idea of, you know, a magician, you know, bringing the bird and the bird coming out, they work hand in hand. But to me, that was like a perfect solution for this page. Um, I'm, I'm, it's probably my favorite um, image in the book. I'm glad you um, pointed it out and, and like it. Yeah, because I think one of the things that I think works throughout the entire book is uh, the, so many of the images are ones that sh that surprise you and yeah. that delight you, you know, like, oh, that's a, a unique way to think about that. Um, mm -hmm. And when the another one of my favorites is the image of LeBron James. Yeah. Um, and how do you decide when to use the popular depiction of King James, for example, or something more enigmatic, like right. like this magic one? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna just go. We're gonna work our way to that piece. So then, we, okay. uh, next in course, we have this is you no know, the um, the games between um, the Celtics and the Lakers are you know well known, and they mm -hmm. and these two men, of course, battled like no others. Um, and so there's these images. Um, you know, here we have um, you know the African American with, with lighter background. We have Bird with the darker background, and then of course those battles continued with other players. And mm -hmm. um, again, the, the layout and design here. We have on one side, I want you to feel the the warmth of the Lakers, and then on this side, on the right hand side, I want you to feel the weather change. You know, the cold and the, mm -hmm. and the fall of um of the Celtics. So th these things are just so much fun to do um, in your illustrating. And then of course about who has the most championships, a great, another great chapter in this book. And again, the, the fight and all the players who contribute mm -hmm. to these championships I want to have there. Um, Michael Jordan. So this page here, this is a special page because this is a page, this is actually a collaboration between me and my friend, illustrator Frank Morrison. Oh, um, yes. He did the graffiti. So, so I, I wow. called Frank up, I said, Frank, I need some graffiti. You know, he does graffiti. And so he says, yes, okay, he I'll send you a few things. So he sent me a few things and I, I played around for a little bit, you know, I got just what I wanted. So, but I give that all the credit to him um, for, for that design, that graffiti, that, that writing, because I want something special. Well, you know, again, the reason, you know, I, I wanted to do something different and capture his spirit and not mm -hmm. just have him leaping or shooting again. So the idea of him being a king, you know, um, king, I didn't put a crown on him. You know, Michael Jordan's sort of my king. <laughs> but, you know, I, I know that's a, that's a fight right there. I just started something. 
so I put the, I put the crown there next to him because um, he is still playing also. Um, right. But but he right. has the ro- he has a, a cape on and all those things. So yeah, but it, again, just another way to sort of um, show something different rather than just showing people shooting and bouncing balls, which is tons of those pictures in the book. But you know, one of the nice things about the graffiti is it does give you a sense of fluidity. Mm-hmm. And it gives you a sense of movement, which is, you yeah. know, the essence of basketball. Yeah. But, you know, and yet the image of, of uh, LeBron is so still. I mean, you could see it's almost like he's, a, he's, he's about to pounce, you know, kind of thing. So I just thought it was a great uh, composition well, in addition you. to just a, a, terrific, um, a terrific painting. Well, those are the things I like, you know, playing with composition and color. You pointed out a lot of my favorites. I like <laughs> the, the other thing I thought is that you were talking about the, um, uh, you like that I, I brought in street ball mm. into uh, yeah. uh, the, it, with the uh, chapter of New York. And that's what it sort of made me think of, mm-hmm. you, know, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And that that was uh, uh, sort of, I didn't know, uh, James, though, that you could farm things out. I, I Maybe I should have uh, uh, got somebody to write a chapter or two. <laughs> are, are you, no, there's, there's artists do collaborations sometimes. I really oh, want to do well, that's true. I'd well, love to do terrific. something, you know, with, um, with Frank and, um, you know, and, and bring that in. And, um, you know, we, we chat about this stuff all the time. So it's good. It's good. Oh, it's quite, it's really quite good. Um, Fred, one of the things that we, that's happening is the increasing global nature of the sport. And that's so interesting. Why do you think that's happening now? I mean, last year's championship team was led by a Greek immigrant of Nigerian heritage. Uh, Giannis. Um, Giannis, um, yeah. yes. The, uh, I won't even try his last name. The, um, I, I worked on it, but I would have needed yeah, to have I, my pronunciation I, I right would, here. I would let it go. <laughs> uh, actually, though, it's been going on a little bit longer uh, um, and I had even thought, I you know, mm-hmm. when I uh, when I started to research it, and I thought, oh well, um, Akeem Olajuwon was exactly. drafted in the same year that Michael Jordan was. Of course, Akeem was taken number one, and Jordan was taken uh, number three. But the um, um, and you know, so that was 1985. So mm-hmm. you know, 35 years of. Uh, um, really the influence of uh, foreign players. It really sort of start, it started to build then. And as we say in the chapter about the dream team, the dream team was a huge uh, part of um, making basketball a bigger international uh, sport because um, they had the stage of the Olympics. They had this incredible team and they really just became the rock stars yes, uh, of the world. And the, um, there are so many people, I quote an NBA person in the, in, the, uh, in the book who said, oh, I can't begin to tell you how many players from outside the country said, oh, I got interested in basketball uh, because of the dream team. And now it is, I looked up the, at the beginning of the year, I looked, I think it was 109 players of the 450 on NBA rosters at the very beginning of the year were from out of the country. And so that's, you know, almost 25%. And that's been pretty uh, solid for a few years. And so now, I mean, just tremendous uh, players and it's still going on. And, uh, you know, I say to kids sometimes when they, oh, I want to be an NBA player. Well, you're not only going to have to be as good as the people in this country. You're mm-hmm. going to have to be as good as the people in other countries, too. It's a, it's a very, very uh, competitive uh, league. And in fact, sometimes the people, oh, they don't try that hard. What? <laughs> it's one of the most competitive sports constantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, that you see. And it seems that you, there's always a new name. You oh, know, yeah. everybody's been talking about Ja Morant this, this week, you right. know. And so there's always somebody who's taking the stage um, and who is really showing a difference, the same style, but an enhancement of the style. 
Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, the uh, what we were talking about with uh, Jordan and that wonderful illustration of him practicing. Well, he realized that in order for me to stay to stay in the league and stay on top, I am going to have to work constantly because there is there are always new players coming up. And in fact, one of the stories that I tell in the book was about Larry Bird, who felt like to improve, he had to get a uh, had to get a step back jump shot, which is now very, very common in the game. And uh, so he took 800 step back ju- jump shots wow. every day for the entire summer. And so you know, I think one of the things that's really underappreciated in all the sports is how hard everybody works yeah. to get into the sport at the highest level and to stay in the sport. You know, one of the things that, um, that, that one of the closing lines takes us back full circle, it's maybe the game is so popular because it is so simple. All you need is a ball, a basket, a decent pair of shoes, and the desire to be the best you can be. And I mean, I think it's that last little phrase that, <laughs> that, uh, that refers back to what you, what you said. Why do you think that resonates with so many different types of people, whether you're from the suburbs, whether from the, from the yeah, urban yeah. areas, from other countries? Well, I think it's one of the most, a game which sort of lets you in. In other mm. words, simplicity about it is okay. Here's the ball. Uh, give it a try. And it's also it's a uh, an incredibly flexible game. Um, one of the quotes that I love in the book is from Jerry West, and he said, "I think I liked playing basketball because it was a game you could practice on your own." Ah. And he had a very very difficult uh, upbringing, and so he kind of wanted to be by himself at times. And so, but he could play basketball. Uh, you can play, another kid shows up, all right, let's play one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, mm-hmm. do a shooting game. Uh, like uh, horse, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, one of the, you know, you have to imitate the shot of the person who made the shot. Or uh, we used to play in my uh, um, driveway around the world. You know, you take shots from different spots on the, the court and you have to go around the world. Uh, so it's a very, very flexible game. And um, in a lot of ways, it's, it's like soccer, another game that mm-hmm. is simple mm-hmm. and lets people in. In fact, my wife, who teaches at the, around the corner at the local uh, um, elementary school, said, you know, Bo, um, the, uh, the two games that the kids play at recess are basketball and soccer. Yeah. Or just need a ball, send them out there. And so I think that's what really uh, kind of brings um, people in and, and keeps them with the game. James, um, I was struck by your dedication to Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at ALA Midwinter when the news came of his passing. So it's one of those things where everybody knows where they were when they heard it. Um, What do you see as his legacy in the game? Um, His, his hard work, you know, in, um, in, in how he played, you know, but I think I would say his, how much dedication he had to the sport. And, um, you know, he started, he started off as a kid really, you know, um, Mm -hmm. right out of high school and and, and continued and played um, all those years. Um, I want to bring the image up to show people because yeah. um, I, I did something in the image. Um, I think Fred, you asked me about this at first. Yeah. Um, about the butterfly. Yeah. Then. Um, and, you know, he had a butterfly tattoo on him. I read that and um, it was dedicated to his wife. And I just felt having a butterfly in there, you know, um, I was working on the, I, well, he had probably passed away um, probably a month or so before I started um, what, before I started working. So it was really still in the news. It was really mm-hmm. you know talked about all the time, um, and so I just felt that this was just a perfect dedication. Uh, I, I think it was the first image I painted for the book. Also, um, I just wanted to capture just you know him and this butterfly flying by him and all the things that butterflies symbolize 
um, as well. Um, him, you know, him leaving, flying off. And um, so, you know, so that's why I have the butterfly there. But I just think, you know, um, you know, everyone has so many different um, wonderful um, um, thoughts and memories of him. And I think for me, it's, it's his, his dedication to the game, um, how um, and how he um, his commitment to um, becoming a better and better player. Yeah. And going back to what Fred had said about how hard, you know, you know, we think about, oh, they're just out there shooting around a little bit, but how much work goes into before we actually see them on the court. Yeah. And he is the epitome of that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I saw his father play. Oh, in wow. College uh, uh, in the palestra. He, he was uh, Joe Jelly Bean Bryant, they used to call him. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that is another part of basketball is, oh, I saw that guy. You know, mm -hmm. I saw him play one time, this place or that place. And so it's uh, um, because I, and one of the things, too, is unlike football or even baseball, the players are so immediate. You can see right. them right out there. They, you can mm -hmm. see them you know, the effort, you can see what they're doing. It's a, it's a game, which is, is very, very immediate. And yeah. uh, you kind of feel like, you know, their personalities. Now, Fred, I've got to put my retired librarian's hat on. Um, <laughs> I was so impressed by the back matter. <laughs> you know, we like those source notes. We like yeah. the bibliography. Why do you think it's important to include it in a book for young readers? Well, you know, I think in a sports book, I think there are some kids who uh, kind of enter the sports uh, through lists and who's the greatest and who's got the most yeah. points and, um, you know, statistics and things like that. So, you know, it wasn't really my idea. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, James, I think with Gridiron, it was the publisher's idea to put some... Um, stuff in the uh, back like that, you know, champions and, and things like that, right. which uh, um, I think, it, 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 yeah, it was a great idea. And I think that uh, it really helped some kids. It's also very interesting. I was looking at the back matter at one point and I thought, wow, 24 of the 30 highest scores in the history of the NBA played for more than one team. Wow. They all moved around. You, know, you, you tend to forget. You think like, oh, well, you know, Jabbar played for the Lakers. Well, yeah, he did. But he also played for the Bucks. Uh, Chamberlain. Oh, he well, he got traded twice. Um, so people move around and it's uh, uh, and then the teams, uh, they list the, all the, the teams and uh, about half of them have had are either in different were in different cities or had different names. So there's always things changing in the league. And that's, you know, one of the things which uh, uh, I hope the book, when kids and the adults in their life read it, realize, oh, what I see now isn't the way it was back then, you know, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 60 right. years. Well, that's, you know, and that's what I like about these books. And that's, um, you know, um, the first book, Gridiron, was um, I proposed the idea. And to me, um, you know, kids are sort of put in the middle of a sport and they want to know the history. At least I want to know the history because names are being thrown out all the time while mm -hmm. you're watching the game. Yeah. So these, yeah. these books, you know, for football and basketball are sort of meant to sort of help kids catch up and understand what their parents and their grandparents know about the sport. And so they can feel more comfortable in those conversations, you know, reading about what Jamelin and who Bill Russell is and what he did and all those things. Well, and also hopefully that they have those conversations. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that uh, uh, that uh, maybe you ask a parent or a, a grand, oh, well, I remember seeing Jordan. I yeah. saw him play. Uh, or, you know, any of the Kobe or any of these uh, names that the kids hear and grandparents, uh, maybe more my age, who will uh, say, oh, well, I saw Bill Russell play. I saw mm -hmm. Bob Cousy play. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's reaching back way back there, but it's, but it's still, uh, you know, sort of brings those people, they were real people. Yeah, yeah. 
and they have debates as well. No, yep. yeah, all well, the debates are always debates. Uh, <laughs> LeBron versus um, Michael Jordan, right? You know, who, who really is, you know, yeah. who is and, the, the, the and then Bill Russell versus Michael Jordan, you know, and, and Cope and all those people. So, Going you know. back to what was it, uh, um, street ball that uh, when they asked Jabbar years ago, who's the greatest player you ever saw? He said, Earl Menengelt, yeah, yeah, who wow. was a, uh, um. It, Playground player in New York. Yeah. He said, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 he was great. And, yeah, uh, the goat. The, yeah. Yeah. the goat. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, and that's again, that's one of the things that attracted me to this manuscript was, I mean, that's I just sort of um, hope that would bring his name into a conversation because often people say that about him. He was that that guy was the best player. Yeah. Well, I want to bring our listeners and viewers into the conversation. We got a few questions. Um, and uh, someone, Angela, has raised the question. She says she was an NBA fan back in the 60s through the 80s, but now the NBA has run, moved away from fundamental team play to run and shoot. So she's become a diehard WNBA fan. Um, now she wants to know, when are you going to write a book about 25 years of the WNBA? And amazing superstar players, Cynthia Cooper, Tina Thompson, Lisa Leslie, Sue Bird, Yolanda Griffith, Tamika Catchings, et cetera. So you got another challenge there. <laughs> well, when, uh, gee, I, it might, if I can get a publisher interested in it, and if I can get uh, James to do it again, I'd certainly uh, like to do it. it. One of the things is, is I, I say jokingly sometimes, I say probably nothing has improved more in my lifetime than uh, restaurant food and women's basketball. That women's more pivot, pivot. <laughs> but uh, but women's basketball is has gotten uh, so much better during my lifetime, and now it's yeah, it's a, uh, a terrific sport, which uh, there probably should be more interest in. It'll it'll be interesting this year when the uh, NCAA is trying to make up for the way they've treated women's basketball, and they're trying to kind of make the men's and uh, women's tournaments more uh, equivalent, and hopefully they'll get a, a, you know, more of an audience. You know, that's one of the things I think we lost when when we did lose Kobe because of his oh, involvement yeah. with his daughter, and he was such a, a presence at women's basketball games. Um, I think he could have helped to bring more people into that. So I hope someone picks up that piece of his legacy and um, makes that bridge. Um, have you had any involvement with MBA management on this book? Um, this is from Sheldon, and he's looking forward to getting his copy soon. <laughs> uh, no, we didn't. Um, what was it? Uh, I don't think we had any uh, involvement in, uh, by the NBA or the NFL uh, uh, in, the, in the books. Uh, most of the research, of course, is done. There's been, uh, I, I put it in the acknowledgments that the uh, there are so many wonderful basketball writers who clearly have a tremendous mm. uh, passion for the game. And uh, I just hope that uh, what I wrote sort of came up to their level uh, because there's been a, there's really a very good uh, literature in uh, the game of basketball. Okay, um, let's see, uh, Michael says that he loves this book, both the book and Gridiron demonstrate a unique collaboration between the author and illustrator. Would you consider working together again? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We, um, sure, I, I'd I, love I, to. <laughs> I keep pitching an idea to um, Fred, but he's, he, he hasn't bit yet. Right. That's right. <laughs> Actually, I've, uh, I've written a, a book on another sport, uh, and I have to uh, get somebody interested in it, too. But the, uh, oh, I, uh, well, with our first collaboration, uh, James and I met at a uh, conference years ago, and uh, he told me about the idea for Gridiron, and uh, he wondered if I would like to write it. And I told him later, I said, uh, oh, he had me at, would you like to work with me? <laughs> he didn't even have to tell me uh, uh, what the subject so I admire his work so much. Thank you. Appreciate but you know, that. it's so interesting because traditionally the, the, uh, the, the, the author illustrators are kept further apart. Yeah. Um, and I think you can see 
that this book and, and, and Gridiron both seem to benefit from a closer collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's respect on both parts as well, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, I, I love the way Fred writes. I mean, as, um, especially yeah. these books. I mean, it, I, when I read it, I hear Fred, Fred's voice, you know, mm -hmm. it's this, this mm -hmm. natural storyteller, you know, um, um, and it, just the way he, he phrases things and the way he tells these stories. Um, they're just, they're really good stories, I mean, really. And to keep the momentum throughout, it's not like, you know, oh, you read it, it goes down, you know, and then goes up again. It's a, mm -hmm. it's, it's a consistency. And it, then it sort of, it fades into a, a historical moment and it brings it back to present moment. And then it just keeps moving. Um, really, really interesting. Well, thank you for saying that. The other thing that you can probably see from this conversation is that in a lot of ways, we're on the same wavelength about a lot of, you know, the sports and things. We just sort of meet that way. And so when I am talking about something, James knows about it. Images are coming up in his head. Stories are coming up in my head. And so it's, uh, you know, yeah, I'd love to, uh, we got to figure out another book uh, uh, to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I'll ask each of you this individually. Um, after all, this is from John, after all of your research and reflection, who is the NBA player you most admire? You wanna take that one, James? I'm, I'm Michael <laughs> Jordan all the way. I'm, I'm Michael, Michael Jordan all the way. Um, you know, I can't, I don't watch a lot of basketball, but I do tune in here and there. And I just remember seeing Michael um, just win a championship almost by himself on the floor and it just impressed me so much um how he, you know i mean he was just doing so much to, to win that game and so he he's my he's my favorite player boy i favorites i mean i have a lot of different favorites um people that i admire i usually athletes that i admire i often admire for what they've done uh off the court um I think uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has, you know, mm -hmm. is a historian, uh, a writer, um, loves jazz. Uh, so he's been a, you know, somebody I think uh, to be admired. Uh, David Robinson started a school down in San Antonio. Um, mm -hmm. You know, somebody really to be admired. Uh, Bill Russell, you know, for all his work in civil rights and stuff. So. Um, there are so many, uh, so many uh, players really to admire, but like James, boy, I'll tell you the, the work and the dedication uh, that they show on the court. You know, you could name, yeah, Jordan, Kobe, Larry Bird. I, 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 have, to do a, I have to do a shout out to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as well. I mean, he was probably my early um sort of I was a big fan of his that um that hook shot he had I mean it's just amazing mm -hmm. every time I take a hook shot I think about Kareem and I was I'm a little sway off to a project I did recently which will be coming out soon hopefully on um, the history channel which is narrated by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar it has a special about African Americans in different wars and I did the oh. artwork for the civil war that's coming out soon so Kareem and I sort of have a project coming out together I never met him because of COVID and all those things, but um, it's just, it was his name got me interested in doing that project. Well, and you can see what I was saying about him. And here's somebody who has become mm -hmm. so much more than an athlete. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, his book, uh, what was it on Coach Wooden and me? Mm -hmm. is a terrific book, you know, a really, really good one. Maybe we should do college basketball. Mm -hmm. I don't think people realize um, just be, right before he died, Kobe Bryant had started um, promoting a line of, of young people's books, middle grade, um, where they were involved with fantasy and sports. So, you know, he was looking to kind of bridge two different interests. Yeah. So I think you're right. I think we, we, we have this idea they're just athletes, but most of these guys are really, really multifaceted, have many layers and are fascinating to learn more about. One of the things um, was yeah. interesting about that point is that in the old days when they weren't paid very much and in fact who was it uh, Sam Jones who mm -hmm. just died his obituary said the most he was ever paid was $55,000 uh, and you know he was one of the greats and so in those days they had to 
do something else. One of the things I point out in the early chapters of the book is the early NBA players had to have other jobs. Wow. They, you know, mm -hmm. they had to, uh, um, I remember, who was it? I think uh, Satch Sanders for um, the Celtics worked in a bank. Uh, and I think Frank Ramsey of the Celtics became the president of a bank. <laughs> you know, so it was, it was a little bit, uh, the money was such that they had to you know, develop other talents. Um, Craig has also loved that picture of Michael Jordan because it engaged all five senses. As he looked, as I look at that picture, I can smell the gym, hear the echoes of the bouncing basketball, the feel of the ball, the taste of cool water after the workout. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it fair to say that Fred and James were able to connect on those levels, just like ball players connect on courts everywhere? Wow, that's a lovely. Well, that's that was some Craig. I got, yeah. I got some that's pretty good Craig. brother. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Craig Still needs to write work. your reviews. <laughs> yeah. Great review. Yeah. You have to use that, Fred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to steal it. Um, yeah. It was, uh, well, you can see from the, the conversation, like I said, that uh, James and I connect on a, on a lot of ways, and there's an easy uh, back and forth. And uh, although it's interesting, I don't, you know, try, I, I let James do his work. I mean, he's really good at what he does. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, and so, and I, that's not the, the way I th think of the world. Um, you know, I think of it in words and not so much in images. And, uh, you know, even like being in these things where we're together and we're talking about the book, I'm always interested in, oh, he was thinking that about that image uh, because it's, it's an education for me. Thank you. And uh, I just want to say that Patricia has also said that she has ordered the book, can't wait to read it. So there are a lot of folks who um, really are intrigued by, by the conversation and looking forward to digging into the book. Um, I've got one more question for you, for the two of you, before we, we end our time. Um, what do you see on the horizon for professional basketball or um, what do you see that what's coming down the road? Any anticipation? Want to take that one, James? I, I was going to let you take that one, Fred. Um, <laughs> You're going to pass off to me. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, again, I just don't, I don't watch that much basketball, mm -hmm. so I'm, I don't want to sort of make any predictions about anything. It's a, it's a great sport. It's a worldwide sport, which is mm -hmm. something else that I liked about the, what you wrote in this book. You actually involve is a chapter that sort of talks about the fact that it's a sport that's being watched and viewed all over the world, and yeah. I really tried to make an image of someone in a very sort of um, rural place in a, a foreign country and they have this little television set and they're watching this sport. So um, that's, and that's really wonderful. Um, you know, so yeah, so, um, you know, I'll let you um, go from there. Um, um, and I also, the last thing, sometimes I think and with the with football, because I was so, I'm such a football fan. Maybe I think this book has a little different spin on it because I'm a little distance from it. And I think that mm -hmm. distance sometimes make it better. And I often, I'm often afraid when I illustrate books about a subject that I like so much that I, I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't have enough space between myself and, 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 and what I'm, illustrating to give it the, the, the imagery or the justice that it needs. I think that's what happens here. It need it has a different type of space than the football. Also, this is the second book. So when you do something a second time, you, you have a, you can sort of make some adjustments from what you did the first time. So, um, you know, those, those are the comments I have about, about myself in basketball. Well, the, I mean, the future of basketball, I think a couple of things are going to, it's, it's going to stay an uh, international sport. I think it'll be, continue to be uh, very popular. The other thing too, I think that's going to happen is in the next few years, we have a uh, uh, chapter on uh, uh, the players who went straight from high school, like yeah. Kobe and like LeBron, who, uh, and then went straight to the pros. I think the rule on that is that where they have to go to college for a year is going to change and you're going to see more of that. And as a result, there is a minor league um, in, of the NBA called the G League and that will probably grow and get more 
uh, interest there. So I think uh, a couple of those things, um, you know, will happen. But, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. And like we've uh, said, really, it was interesting um, with Gridiron, we had a, or I wrote a few more uh, uh, chapters about the coaches of, mm. uh, uh, mm. in the game because the coaches were so influential because football is such, in a lot of ways, a coach dominated game. Like you can scheme something, you can make up. Mm-hmm. You can, basketball is a real player sport. You know, in other words, <laughs> Michael Jordan, give me the ball, clear out the side. Here I exactly. go. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that's, it makes it really exciting. And it makes the individual players so compelling. That, yeah. oh, and that's where I think a lot of the kids, you know, that's why they love, you know, oh, I got a favorite player. I, I love LeBron. I think he's right. great. Or right. we haven't even mentioned Steph Curry, yeah. you know. I, I want to. I want to just say one one more thing. I want to say. I, I put this in. There, I forgot to show you guys on this page here. There's, have you ever seen the um, the kid graduating with the hat on? Have you seen it, Fred? Uh, you, no, no. See, the, see the purple there. It's a silhouette of someone. When you get the look at oh, your oh, oh right yes. The, oh. the, the art director couldn't see it when I did this piece. I go, you don't you see that. that kid there with a, with a graduation hat on, you know. <laughs> so so, so I see it. I, that's a, maybe something as a test. I'm mean, not a test, but maybe uh, something people can do when they look through the book to ask people, hey, did you see the kid in the graduation hat? Because that's what that's about. All the people who didn't graduate from um, college. Instead mm-hmm. of a, a, Rorschach, a Rorschach test, uh, we'll have a random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you find the graduation hat? That should be the, that's going to be the new the new uh, test for for folks to deal with the book. Well, I just I, I mean you know I'm such a sports fan and I'm such a fan of both of you, um, so we could do this I could do this forever. But we got to let you get back to writing and painting and and all of those good things. And uh, thank you for your insights. Thank you for uh, this wonderful conversation. And I have certainly enjoyed it. And I'm sure all of our listeners and viewers have as well. Thank, Thank you. you for leading Thank you for through it. Yeah, right. Can Emma? Come to Baltimore soon. Oh, please come to Baltimore soon. We miss you. We miss yeah. you guys. If we yeah. ever get out of this pandemic, we'll have to get back down to the Reginald right. Lewis Museum. Yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Thank you so much to all of you for being here today. And thank you viewers for those excellent questions. Um, As someone who grew up in Syracuse and religiously attended SU Orange Games at the Dome, I loved learning about how much basketball and its history started in SU and Syracuse. So I loved that tidbit. And it was great to chat with all three of you. Um, For the folks listening, don't forget, you can still click the link in the chat box to get your copy of Hardcourt. As an independent bookstore, we appreciate your support. You can learn about our other upcoming events in the Children's and Teens Department on our website. Just click on the Children's and Teens tab and then click events uh, for a calendar of upcoming events. You can also view past events on our YouTube channel. So thank you, every, uh, thank you everyone, and thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you again soon. Take care. Take care.